Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the campaign in which hopefully today we will be defeating the second faction. Now, off camera, I have been rather busy doing a little bit of retrofitting for the Minicorn and for the end game, which, by the way, almost everyone thinks I should simply keep the name end game, and I do actually agree. So that's that is the tank's official name, although the Minicorn, I'm still undecided. Some people love it, some people less so, I really don't know. But either way, the two main changes I have done to the Minicorn is that now it's far, far lighter and far more stable in that it now has additional rotor blades and a much better PID system in addition to more hydrofoils. But also, I have changed the detection system massively, and one change I have done to both the endgame and the mini corn is I have swapped out a lot of the belt fed loaders for regular loaders. This means their fire rate has been cut by about 15-20% but when it's out of ammo it will still be reloading rather than only being able to reload after it's completely run out of shells. As long as there's some ammo in the ship, even if it's firing, it will actually be reloading which is pretty darn helpful. So you... I would like to retrofit you to the version 2. There we go. And the same goes for you. Excellent. And then if we go on over to the end game, the turret itself, I wish to refit you to the new version of the turret. And let's just get that all sorted. And let's just check to make sure it's actually affected them. Oh, and before I forget, I have now changed the shells that the back turret is using. Uh, for those who can remember, I was using a mix of regular fragment shells and the high explosive anti-tank shells, the heat shells. The name just finally came back to me there. But now I've decided, after seeing them both in action, I am going purely for the anti-tank shells, which is weird because we don't really fight tanks in this game. But essentially, it just cuts through armor, and after a lot of testing, even shooting at things like our tank, they just seem to do a little bit better in a lot of situations, although they do a lot worse in others. So, the back turret is now more specific, but far more deadly in those specific situations. Also, I just realized I haven't set up this detection system correctly because I haven't changed the AI. One second, let me guess, not connected? Of course you're not. And here we go into our first battle of the day. This is the battle for their last resource zone. If we can do this, we've pretty much won, which would be absolutely lovely. So, Endgame, I want you to go over there on your own, please. Blargles, please go into the deep water. That would be fantastic. I wonder if I could actually make them go underwater straight away if I was in sea mode. Probably could after this battle so that the game actually recognizes that they are indeed subs. Okay, you can go there, you can go there. So what's against us then? We have the mining laser, the mine sprinkler, the mech, the buzzsaw, which is actually the scariest thing so far, the hauler, and the mine sprinkler. So the mine sprinklers can do a lot of damage to us if they get in into the correct position early. The mining laser is absolutely hellish, and the hauler isn't all that powerful but is really, really hard to kill. And so it begins. Okay then, let's see how this goes. The hauler is healing the mine sprinkler, which is incredibly annoying. And it's pretty much getting away with it. It has taken quite a bit of damage, missiles hitting from behind, and there is one of the main shells from the tank, Pretty much finishing it off. Absolutely glorious. The missiles from the hauler thankfully missing, and we do have a hull breach on the minicorn. Although thankfully it's not sinking. Ow, that's a lot of damage being taken by us. Incoming cram shell in the front. Not nice. I think we may have lost that front turret, or at least it's offline for some reason. Maybe the AI was knocked off. It is going underwater. Darn it, even after all those changes. Not as badly, though. It seems to be kind of... Oh, it is going back up. Okay, that was the PID, the PID system kicking in using one of the rotor blades to get it back up. So, yes, it is indeed much better. 
What happened to the... Oh, it must have died. Okay, never mind. Can someone please focus on this mech? Actually, I wonder if any torpedoes are heading towards it. They really should be. Oh, look at the timing. Torpedoes for the win. Thank you, Blargle. And a lot of damage there to the back section, but not quite enough yet. I need to make it so that my forces stop focusing on aircraft so much. For a while, that was needed. Less so now. Yeah, the one Minicorn took way too much damage. It's lost both of its turrets. Essentially, it's dead. Oh, that shot, though. We couldn't see the explosion, weirdly, but we did see everything else falling off. Man, these haulers are such brutes to actually kill. Really love that design. At some point, I will have to sort of dissect this and learn from it, because hats off, when I see a good design, I know it, and that design is amazing. Okay, what's left? Just the mech again? Okay. Are we ignoring it? I'm guessing maybe it's already dead. Yep, it's already dead, so everyone's just ignoring it. Um, could you guys actually kill it instead? That'd be great. Thank you very much. And we are pretty much a little bit ahead on resources from when we started, but let's see the actual damage we took. Yeah, the one Minicorn was really damaged. Even after healing for a while there, it's still on just over 90%. Okay, everyone, please get back. That would be fantastic. There we go, all healed up. So, it was a pretty neutral fight. Really happy to see that the Minicorn is better than it was, but I think... I really do think it's a ship which needs to be retired. It's going to take a lot of changes to get the Minicorn to a state where it doesn't sink even a little bit. But it did resurface, it did come back from the depths, so reasonably happy. Also, its self-healing is still really good. I think it has something like 30 repair bots, and that's why it got back over 90% after the battle, because it was definitely under that, considering the two turrets make up like 30% of its health. And now, of course, it's time to steal yet another gathering pod. Uh, let's go with the tank. I love seeing the tank shells absolutely shred things, so let's do some tank work. As much as I really do hate the rain in this game, you have to admit, it is very pretty. Seagulls, why do you still exist in this game? Is it so wrong that I would rather have a hawk? Okay, stop, stop. And let's get on board my turret, that would be lovely. And aim! Target! Fire! Oh, that was loud. Oh, I love this gun so much. Thank you. And now, once again, we get the pleasure of trying to kill this thing quickly. Well, it is indeed ramming us. That is exactly what's happening right now. There we are, all nice and done. Although the turret does seem to be glitching into the back metal here causing us to slightly sink backwards. The joy of using sub-vehicles, I suppose. Sometimes glitches do happen. Okay, so, gathering a bard, please be repaired. And there we are, the Gathering Pod on 100%, and even with its own little Heartstone. So there we go, our new resource zone is ours. So now we have one, two, three... Four, five, six resource zones, although this one over here is almost fully drained. All the rest are absolutely fine. And what are you? Oh, you're one of the satellites, okay. Just having a look, see what I actually have left. I'm very tempted to scrap our original buildings now. We really don't need them, and it would be like 50,000 resources into our coffers, which would be kind of nice, honestly. It turns out it wasn't actually a glitch. When I was adding the vehicle controller back here, essentially I had accidentally opened up a large section here, which was holding some of our rotor blades. 
So not only did I remove the back rotor blades, I also caused a hull breach. Well done to me, and upon adding all that extra stuff, I somehow went one over the volume limit so I couldn't even repair. So yeah, it was just me being a dumb dumb apparently. But now the rotor blade is back where it's meant to be, and as you can see, the back of the tank is nice and dry. Ah, that's not what I wanted to see. Apparently, this area is protected by a strength 73. That's going to be a little bit challenging. And also, we have now seen the next faction for the very first time, the Twilight R&D, which apparently is already hatred towards me, which is a little bit curious because I didn't see them declare war against me. Perhaps I simply missed the pop-up, because apparently I, I also missed the pop-up for this faction, so either it didn't appear, or I'm a little bit not very good at observing things. You know, there's an actual term for that, but it's not in my head at the moment. The word I was looking for was oblivious. Best name for a cannon ever. I really don't like it when the enemy's fleet is bigger than ours, so a mining laser, mining laser, mining laser, and then we have 100% and your name is completely obscured. The mine sprinkler, another mining laser, and oh boy, a mining laser. Oh god, this is going to go so badly, isn't it? On the upside, they're really frail. On the downside, these are the things which almost killed my tank last time, and there's four of them. So what are the other two little ones? I'm going to guess mechs, because they're so low. Yep, yeah, mech and I'm assuming mech as well, although it's being hidden by the lovely double swords. There we go, let's zoom out, using the magic of the scroll wheel. No, apparently we're just not allowed to know what that one actually is. It could be anything. Anything. Yep. Um. Well, that's one way of beating me in a battle. Make it so I can't see what's going on. Please, stop. Here we go into the enemy territory, and against us we have the hauler, the mine sprinkler, the hauler, the hauler, the mech, the mining laser, and a high altitude bomber. That is way too many haulers. That's going to take a lot of firepower to eventually kill them. Oh, also, be careful, be really careful, we do not want to accidentally spawn in the enemy base during this fight. It's going to be a pretty horrible fight anyway, don't really want any additional complications. Also, the watercolour right now, and the rain, and the storms, it looks like the start of a really bad nautical-themed horror. Yeah. I don't think this is a particularly good omen. Kind of pretty, though, in a really dark, depressing way. And look, there's the tank in the distance. We can just about see it. Well, then, here we go. Sadly, in the rain and the darkness. So, probably won't be able to see all that much. And what are we firing at first, then, my lovely little minicorn? We are firing at the enemy flyers. This time, I think that is very much allowed. Now, I have spawned in the Blargle a little bit closer than I originally intended, but I think it may actually go for the best, because I want those torpedoes to hit this thing, this thing, as soon as possible. As soon as that base dies, it's all over. Trying to hit the top section just takes forever, since the base can keep on healing it over and over again. Go. Okay, the shots are going for the mining laser quite a lot there. Actually doing a lot of damage very quickly. Well, that's pretty darn good. And there's one of the main shells from the tank doing a lot of damage, but sadly the mining laser is being healed by the mech. That thing is so ridiculously annoying. Oh, I have been hit. I have officially been hit. That's not good. Let's try and hide a little bit more. Or fall off. That's what I wanted to do. Let's go on to the Blargle. The Blargle's the best bet for our safety. So let's pause the game because of my little blunder there. So how's everything going? The tank is just fine. The high altitude bomber has been destroyed by the two Minicorn. The enemy mine sprinkler is still sadly alive. The enemy mining laser has taken a lot of damage. And for health, we're doing okay actually. We're doing just fine. But where are those? Ah, uh, hello, torpedoes. Dun dun. Ah, 
They're only just about fast enough to actually catch up. And there we go, huge explosions there at the back and on the side, causing it to at least start to sink. Shots absolutely everywhere. The last hauler has just spawned in. The haulers really don't seem to do all that well. Their missiles, I think, need to be a little bit more accurate. Saying that, just watch me now die to them. But the first hauler is finally going down. Ooh. A lot of hits there from the cannons against one of our minicorn, but it is just about surviving it. That didn't look good. Some damage to the turret, or was that just the gun firing? That was just the gun firing, okay. Taking a missile, but surviving it like a champ. This is the most laggy the game has been in quite some time, and I think it's because of all those harpoons. The first hauler is going into the water, which is really good, since now the torpedoes once again have a target. The consistent fire rate of our guns is doing really well. I think converting them was the right choice, although those two healing each other, really annoying. This may take a while. Yeah, those harpoons definitely need a rework. Is that an enemy? Yes, it is. It's the mining laser from earlier. Okay, good. The two haulers have now finally split up, which means we are doing damage to them, and they're not healing it. Which is absolutely lovely, to be perfectly honest. Really, though? That's going to happen? Ooh, maybe I can actually capture one of the haulers. Quickly, get onto the tank. I said let me get onto the tank. Thank you. Hello, I'm on the tank. Uh, tank, could you stop moving, please? Okay, well, we've... Re okay, boarding time! Yeah, maybe we should turn off our weapons. There's two of them there! Oh, wow, this is going to be an absolute mess. Where on earth is the AI on this thing? I have no idea. Also, yes, the tank is trying to climb it, because that's just what this tank is programmed to do as soon as it hits anything, so it's going to try and get on top of the enemy. Admit it, that is a really weird screenshot to see in, in the middle of the ocean. Two drones being mounted by a tank with harpoons in the background. Aha, I have found the AI, it's on the top, and now I've turned off all of my craft, so I should have enough time to capture this. I just need to actually get onto that section there. Aha, I got one. However, I am about to die because it doesn't have a heartstone right now. No, I didn't want to go back into the same craft. That was not what I wanted at all. Oh, cool, we're healing it. Am I healing? Am I okay? Did I live? Huh. Look at that. Hello, little fella. How you doing, buddy? Um, okay, guys, kill that last one, please. We have one, we can simply keep making it. I can't be bothered to, to try and do that again, especially since it's now airborne again. Unless it starts to go down. Oh, it's already too damaged. Everyone stop. Maybe it'll go down in time. No, just utterly obliterated. Well, at least we managed to capture one. Did not expect that. Uh, hauler, let's jump on you for a second. Hello, how are you doing? I would love, absolutely love, adore, and be happy if you were to have a Hearthstone. Yay, I get to live now. Right, good. Okay, let's have a quick look-see at your weapons then. Shall we? As soon as they're healed, this may take a little while. Whoa, that is a... You're fully RTG-based. I didn't expect that either, okay. Also, how are you so tanky? That's my question, because I can't see anything which indicates a really tanky nature. Oh, having RTGs mean you don't have a few explosive items, but you definitely have ammo. So maybe you've just really well defended your ammo. Let's have a quick look-see, and let's go like this. 
Ta-da! So now we can see inside of the craft. And I see some heavy armor blocks surrounding the AI. Where on earth is your ammo storage? That's my big question. I can't see it anywhere. Oh, it's around the sides here. So it's really far away from most of your important components. Okay. Huh. I don't think it has a PID system. I think it's completely control block based. So two things I didn't expect. What are you? You are ammo makers. Okay, so that's how it does it. It, it relies heavily on ammo makers rather than ammo barrels. And it has all of, its comp all of its components very, very split up. Now, could you please heal completely one of these missiles? I would love to see exactly what they're made of. Okay, I think... I might be able to see the problem here. In fact, two things, which may be the issue. Since the missiles never seem to hit, it's clearly a problem. And, okay, so first of all, laser designator receiver. It has one of those, which is fine. But, I can't see a missile laser. I have not seen these use a missile laser, so I don't think it has any guidance. No, that can't be the case, though, because they definitely go towards the enemy, so maybe that's not the case. But, until it's healed, I will be a little bit suspicious about that. The second thing, very, very little fuel. There's a chance it's simply running out of fuel before it's, hit, before it's actually hitting the target, especially since we're already so far up in the air. I may end up changing these missiles and turn them into regular missiles and just have this as a, well, a flying missile carrier. Okay, there we are, full health. Let's have a, a quick look-see. Okay, yeah, so it does have the missile laser, but... No, it has one at the bottom as well. I was going to say maybe it only has one at the top, but that does seem to be a little bit blocked. Maybe that's the issue. It's trying to aim using the lasers, but the lasers aren't locking on properly. So maybe just swapping them for maybe active radar seekers might do a lot of good. I am diagnosing problems here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the laser system completely, swap them over to radar seekers instead, and I'm going to make them into regular missiles. Oh, that seems so mean, though. That's clearly not the intended purpose of this thing. But that would be a sodding horrific volley. That would be some serious damage. Oh, look at my little seat and my head midway in a block. Oh, I don't know what to do here. Half of me is like, yeah, just make them in into regular missiles. It'll work better. Then the other half of me is like, but what if we can use it for its intended purpose? How cool would that be? Yeah, it was the Hearthstone. And that's because I didn't do it properly. So Hearthstone, we need some of the extensions. So we're going to have to steal a few blocks. I'm very sorry. There we are. And there we go. Now it'll stay at 1,000. All good. Missiles are now ready. Excellent. And that's about it. Okay, I suppose let's get into the fight against the enemy base. Well, here we go, versus the Corpus HQ and two of the Doom Cannons. I am really curious to see if this is the same Corporate HQ as the last one, or is it going to be a little bit stylized? I am really, really curious. So, let's put the hauler in the middle, because I kind of want to see how well it can take damage. Not going to lie, kind of want it to be shot a little bit. And then... We'll put the tank off to the side a little bit, and the two minicorns over on this side. So like that. Make sure you're spawning at maximum height straight away, so you don't get any friendly fire. Uh, maybe more like there. We could try to flank it, actually, and place it here instead, but I would rather be within the group. Into the battle we go, but let's make sure all of these are on. I'm actually a little bit nervous about these missiles, honestly. How they're placed, there is a very real chance that they may hit the side of our ship, or simply not hit the target. Please don't do either of those, that would be great. Yep, one of them did hit the back. Yeah, we need to move those, but 
for the most part, the missiles are going where they were meant to. Okay, we've done a lot of damage to one of the Doom Cannons. Let's have a quick look, see what the Doom Cannon even is. It's a rail gun. With very little in the way of detection systems. I am curious about this. How can you accurately fire such a fast gun? Look, explosion. Cool. Okay, then we have the corporate HQ, which by the looks of things, yep, it is exactly the same as the last one, just with different colours. And then we have the other Doom Cannon. Has the Doom Cannon actually hit one of our ships yet? It seems like it has, yeah it has, but by the looks of things the shield held up so only fragments went through because that would be way more damage otherwise. Railguns are pretty scary, you know? Oh, both, do both Doom Cannons AI dead at the same time and incoming the missiles from our captured vehicle! And destroyed. I could have captured them, but honestly, I was just too keen on watching other things happen. Did your cannon not fire? I was holding onto the cannon. Oh, I am so dumb. Didn't really matter. The missiles did their thing. But I should have been more careful. Okay, so everyone off for a second, please. That was a bit of a easier fight than I expected, but we learned a few things. These ain't gonna work. These are not going to work where they currently are. We need to move them elsewhere. Is that a local, a local weapon controller? What are you using? Oh, of course, the cannon at the back. That makes sense. Such a cute little cannon as well. Pew pew. I really do love the hauler, so I will be doing a lot of work with this, I think. Now, I did see something before this, and yep, if you look over here, we are under attack from the next faction, but I am going to leave that until the next episode because I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode in the next one. We are apparently going straight to war with the next faction who clearly did declare war on us because there's a large fleet heading our way. And off camera, I'm going to do a little bit of work with the hauler. We are going to corrupt it and make it one of ours. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, if you have enjoyed the video, then likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Two factions down, two to go.